Good morning! Welcome to Geometry. From this week, our topic is from 12-3, Describe Angles. From textbook pages 780 to 787. Before we start, I want you to prepare the following. Your geometry textbook, your pen, and your copy book. An inscribed angle intersects an 80-degree arc. Find the measure of the inscribed angle. Well, what is an inscribed angle? Let's go ahead and start off this problem by recalling what an inscribed angle is. Well, when we're talking about an inscribed angle, we're dealing with circles. An inscribed angle is an angle that's drawn inside a circle with the vertex on the circle. So let's take a look at an example of an inscribed angle. Say we have this angle right here. It's an angle that's inside the circle with a vertex on the circle. Let's say that this point here is M, and this one is P, and this we can call N. So this is our angle M, P, N. Now notice, where this angle intercepts our circle, we get this arc. This is arc M, N. Now, we're given the measurement of our arc, 80 degrees. We're trying to find this, the measurement of the inscribed angle. Why do we do that? Turns out that the measurement of this angle and the arc that the angle intercepts have a special relationship. The measurement of this inscribed angle is actually half of the measurement of the arc that the angle intercepts. So, if we take our angle, MPN, that is actually equal to half the measurement of the arc that we intercept with that angle. So half the measurement of arc MN. Or we could say that the other way around. That arc is twice the measurement of that inscribed angle. So if we double the measurement of our inscribed angle, that is equal to the measurement of the arc that that angle is intercepting. So now that we know this relationship, let's go ahead and apply it to our problem. To get a better visual of our inscribed angle, let's go ahead and sketch what it might look like. Here we have another circle to work with. Now to draw our inscribed angle, think about what we're given. We're given the measurement of the arc we're working with. So let's draw that first. Our arc measures 80 degrees. Well, if we go all the way around a circle, that's 360 degrees. Cut that into fourths and we get 90 degrees apiece. 80 degrees is a little bit less than 90 degrees. So we want to take a little bit less than a fourth of this circle. So here, this can be our arc. From here to here. Let's call this point B and this point A. So this arc measures 80 degrees. Now we just need to draw an inscribed angle in our circle. And it doesn't matter where we put the vertex. We'll get the same answer in the end. So we need to go from here and draw these lines that connect at a vertex that sits on our circle. Let's call this point C. Now we have an inscribed angle that's intersecting an arc that measures 80 degrees. And we need to find this, the measurement of our inscribed angle. Well, how can we go about solving for that? If we look at the equations that we just made, we could use either one, but we're looking for the measurement of our angle. So let's go ahead and use the first equation since that's already solved for. If we look at our values, we're now looking for the measurement of angle B, C, A. And to find that, we can take the measurement of our arc, arc B, A, and cut that in half. Well, the measurement of our arc is 80 degrees. So we want to take 80 degrees and cut that in half. If we just take half of 80, that's 40. So we end up with an angle measurement of 40 degrees. That is the measurement of our inscribed angle. So we have now found what we were looking for. This inscribed angle measures 40 degrees. And we were able to find that using our knowledge of inscribed angles 
and how they relate to the arcs that they intercept. So now we have found our answer. In this problem, you will use the inscribed angle theorem to find angle and arc measures. What are the values of A and B? Which variable should you solve for first? You know the inscribed angle that intercepts arc PT, which has the measure A. You need A to find B, so find A first. Use the inscribed angle theorem to find A. Remember, the inscribed angle theorem states that the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. Now substitute. Now multiply each side of the equation by 2 to isolate the variable. So A equals 120. Now use the inscribed angle theorem again to find B. Notice that arc PS is formed by arc PT and arc TS. So use the arc addition postulate. Remember, the arc addition postulate states that the measure of the arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. Now substitute. So B equals 75. Find the value of each variable. Here, we have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. We're given two of the angle measures in this quadrilateral. We're asked to find the value of x and the value of y. So what do we know about the angle measures in an inscribed quadrilateral? Luckily, the corollary to the inscribed angle theorem tells us something about the angles in a quadrilateral that's inscribed in a circle. So let's begin by first recalling that corollary. It says, if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, the opposite angles will be supplementary. So, if we have a circle, and we have a quadrilateral inscribed in the circle, we know the opposite angles will be supplementary. In other words, the opposite angles will add to 180 degrees. If we take a look, the angle opposite angle A is angle C. That means angle A and angle C are supplementary. So we can say that A plus C has to equal 180, since those angles are supplementary. The angle across from angle B is angle D. That means angle B and angle D are supplementary. So we can say B plus D has to equal 
180, since they're supplementary. So if we take a look, if we want to solve for x and y, we need to identify the opposite angles. Once we have the opposite angles, we can write equations since we know opposite angles are supplementary. Then we can solve those equations to get the values of x and y. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and first identify the opposite angles in this quadrilateral. If we take a look across from angle y is 87 degrees. That means angle y and 87 degrees are opposite angles. If we take a look at angle x, opposite of angle x is 95 degrees. That means angle x and 95 degrees are opposite angles. Since we've identified the opposite angles, we know these opposite angles will be supplementary. They'll add up to 180 degrees. So we can go ahead and we can write equations. So let's go ahead and do that. We can say y plus 87 has to be equal to 180, since these two angles are supplementary. We can also say x plus 95 has to be equal to 180, since these two angles are supplementary. Now we're ready to go ahead and solve these two equations. If we take a look in the first equation, we're trying to solve for y. So we need to get y by itself. To do that, we need to subtract 87 from both sides. If we subtract 87 from both sides, on the left-hand side, we have just y. On the right-hand side, we have 180 minus 87, which is equal to 93. That means y is equal to 93. In this equation, we need to solve for x. We need to isolate x. To do that, we need to subtract 95 from both sides. If we subtract 95 from both sides, on the left-hand side, we just have x. On the right-hand side, we have 180 minus 95, which is equal to 85. That means x is equal to 85. So now we know y is equal to 93 and x is equal to 85. In this problem, you will use corollaries to find angle measures. Part A, what is the measure of angle one? Is there too much information? The diagram has more information than you need. Focus on what you need to find. Angle 1 is inscribed in a semicircle. Remember, corollary 2 to the inscribed angle theorem says that an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. By corollary 2, angle 1 is a right angle, so the degree measure of angle 1 is 90. Part B. What is the measure of angle 2? Again, the diagram has more information than you need. Focus on what you need to find. In this problem, you will use an arc measure to find an angle measure. In the diagram, line SR is tangent to the circle at point Q. If the degree measure of arc PMQ is 212, what is the measure of angle PQR? What do you know? You know that line SR is tangent to the circle at point Q. 
you also know that the degree measure of arc PMQ is 212. What do you need? You need the measure of angle PQR. So what's your plan? The measure of angle PQS plus the measure of angle PQR equals 180. So first find the measure of angle PQS using arc PMQ. The measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a chord is half the measure of the intercepted arc. Substitute the measure of arc PMQ. Now simplify. So the degree measure of angle PQS is 106. Angles PQS and PQR form a linear pair. So use the linear pair postulate. Remember, the linear pair postulate states that two angles that form a linear pair are supplementary. So the sum of the measures of angles PQS and PQR equals 180. Substitute the measure of angle PQS. and simplify. So the degree measure of angle PQR is 74. How can you check the answer? One way to check is to use the measure of angle PQR to find the measure of arc PQ. Then confirm that the sum of the measures of arcs PQ and PMQ is 360. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, just send it through Scology. Have a good day.